Hi friends, one of my absolute favorite items in my art kit is my fan brush. I recommend using a synthetic fan brush. This is important as some of the techniques involve masking fluid and masking fluid really adheres to and can ruin your natural hair bristles. I'm using my ivory fling from my line of paint brushes and it's a smooth synthetic bristle that's really rigid and firm. Most importantly, the bristles stay beautifully splayed, which is the key to achieving excellent texture. We're going to be using masking fluid. I'm using my Pebio drawing gum. And to protect your brushes, you're going to want to have a little bit of soap um, to protect your bristles from the masking fluid. And I'm just using uh, the master's brush cleaner, but you can use any hard bar soap. You're gonna want a test strip of paper, a nice pad of paper towel or a rag, and you may even want to have some Kleenex or tissue on hand. Of course, you're going to want a big, beautiful palette that has lots of mixing space for the various color recipes we're going to be creating. This is an excerpt for a full-length video tutorial, and I was working on four equal spaces, but you can just work on a small 5 by 7 sample. So we're going to look at this farm scene here, and we're going to just focus on the foreground below the fence line. So as you can see, there's multiple kind of waves or rifts in the grasses. And I want you to start looking at fields and meadows as if they were almost like an ocean scene or a seascape where you could see defined ripples in the grasses. And I think this is a really important factor in recreating that sort of depth in your own paintings. When you're able to kind of pick out contour lines and mounds or segments of grass, then you can start creating a little bit more perspective. I like to think of the field as being divided into thirds, where most of the activity in the lower portion of the frame belongs to the foreground, and through the middle of the field, that belongs to the middle ground, and in the back strip, that belongs to the background. So foreground, middle ground, background. Before we get to the fun part, I wanna show you how to hold your brush and use your masking fluid. When I do the grasses, my brush is flipped around like so, and that ensures that when I apply the strokes, that they naturally taper as I lift off the paper. So I start at the base of the grasses and I pull upward. And in the lower level grasses, that bottom third, these are the grasses that are closest to us. You'll notice that I'm pivoting my brush and creating some interesting angles. As we move through the middle layer, I can do the same thing, but these strokes are going to be a little shorter. And again, still working from the bottom up using a light touch. So this is the same technique that I use both for my masking fluid and then to actually paint the grasses themselves. When we get to the upper third portion of the field, I can apply a few little grasses here, but once again, they're gonna be so short, and in subsequent layers, I might even just consider tapping for texture. Just to say, oh, there's a little, there's some changes and some kind of rifts and waves in the field, but it's so far away, we can't really even see the grasses themselves. So that's how you build perspective through layering texture. Again, we do this both with the paint and with the masking fluid. Very simple and effective way to create perspective in your fields. So we're gonna start with a wash, and I'm just gonna use my one inch wash brush. I'm gonna pre-wet this space, and we're just gonna take it all the way up. So we're just eliminating that farm altogether and really just focusing on the grasses here. So once that's wet, I'm gonna put down a light kind of neutral green. And for us, for these purposes, I'm just gonna use sap green. And then I'm going to bring in a little bit of gamboge. This is just our first wash. And of course, depending on your field, you're gonna have different combinations of greens. 
but for now we're just kind of focusing on a simple palette. So here comes the gamboge and I'm just going to keep that brighter, warmer color in the foreground. So we're actually going to just let this totally dry. A really important tip here is to make sure that you do not overload your brush with masking fluid. If I put too much masking fluid on my brush, I'm going to end up with big blocky blobs of um, well, masking fluid <laughs> and that doesn't look like grass at all so the key here is to just lightly mask and if you have too much in your brush just wipe the excess off use a light hand and a brisk brush stroke that's what's going to give you those fine grasses with the tapered tip and you can try using masking fluid pens or um, other tools, but I find the fan brush is a really great way to work quickly and efficiently because you're laying down multiple strokes instead of just one little blade at a time. Certainly, if you have areas of grass that require a few really specific elegant strokes, you can use your rigger or your liner. Again, make sure it's synthetic. And then you can kind of, after you've masked larger groups of grasses with your um, fan brush, you can go and just pick out a few really lovely and much more specific shapes with your rigger or liner. I want to make sure it's 100% dry because the next thing we're going to be doing is actually applying some masking fluid. For this you're going to need masking fluid. I use the Pebeo drawing gum and you're going to want some hard soap like a bar of soap or as you can see here, I'm using my master's brush cleaner, but any hard soap will do, and that's just to protect the bristles. So I want to wet my fan brush, and then I soap the fan brush, and then I wipe that extra soap off, and I'm ready to dip into my masking fluid. Whatever masking fluid brush you're using, you want to make sure that it's synthetic. I'm using my ivory fling here. You can see that the bristles remain really splayed beautifully and I won't ever have to struggle to kind of break them up. Now with the grass it's really important that we make sure that we're kind of changing direction and that the strokes are interesting. This is pretty much how your masking fluid should look on top of the green base before you move on to the next layer. It's important not to overdo the masking fluid here. If you're a little heavy-handed, you'll end up with very blocky clumps, and that's not something that we're looking for here. We want fine lines. If you do end up with clumps of grass, you can just take your finger once the masking fluid is dry and then just rub off the sections that didn't work out for you. So now it's time to actually apply more paint. I've washed the masking fluid off of my brush, and I'm ready to move into slightly darker values. For this, I'm just going to apply to the surface of the paper for now, and then while these strokes are wet, I'm going to drop in some other colors. So you can see we're staying with that same formula, working the fan brush very lightly in just like light, brisk strokes from the base up, making sure that I'm not being too mathematical, my strokes aren't too symmetrical, they're nice and wild and uneven. Moving to the middle ground, shorter strokes. If you can see your masking fluid, then just follow that pattern, but you don't have to stick with it exactly. So before that dries, I actually wanna go into my burnt umber and get a little bit of violet mixed up in there. And I'm going to apply some earthier tones to the bases of the um, middle grasses, just for this particular field. Actually, I'm actually gonna throw some in here to the base of my foreground grass as well. That just kind of suggests a little bit of an earthy kind of quality. Go back to my sap green. Before that dries, I'm just gonna introduce some hookers green dark. I don't have to worry too, too much about the texture here, although I do want it looking grassy. Um, we do have quite a lot of texture that we've created from the previous layer or in the previous layer with the masking fluid. Okay. 
in this foreground layer, I can actually introduce a little bit more of that yellow, keeping in mind that warm colors come forward and cool colors recede, so a little bit more of a warmer tone in the foreground. And I'm working with the Hawker's Green Dark again. And then finally we're getting to that section where I'm just sort of tapping some grasses until in this section it just fades away. I'm going to bring a little bit of ultramarine blue in with some Hooker's Green Dark just to create slightly bluer, softer fields. And I'm just going to wash that out with a bit of water. It just depends on how much focus you want to bring to that area. The wetter the paper, the softer the focus. back a little bit more uh, value here so I'm just tapping a little suggestive line. I think I can rev up the value making it a little bit darker in the middle here so I'm going back to the burnt umber violet and I think I'm actually just going to add a little bit of hooker's green dark just to make things a bit more interesting some bigger changes more shifts in value you don't want to build too, too much up here or it will all just turn into one value and one color. So I think that that is plenty. If you feel like just kind of finishing off this scene just to make it feel like you've got a bit of closure, you can imagine a little tree line perhaps back here. So we could say, we've got a little bit of ultramarine and Hooker's Green Dark on my brush here just using a number six round. Now that this has had a chance to dry, we can remove the masking fluid. And once again, this piece has quite a lot of masking fluid on it, so rather than use my fingers, I'm going to use my rubber cement pickup. Make sure you get rid of all that residual gummy stuff from previous exercises. Also ensure that it doesn't streak on your painting by just checking it out on a blank sheet of watercolor paper first. So you can see some of the extra texture that was created from the masking fluid starting to really show up beautifully. So I just feel around, make sure that I've gotten all the masking fluid. And honestly, that looks pretty swell, I would say. If you wanted, if the masking fluid has gotten a little chunky in some areas, you certainly can go back on a dry surface and repaint some grassy strokes using your fan brush. I'm just working on dry here. Just use whatever colors you have laid down or perhaps even introduce some new colors. Once again, it's so important to use a fan brush whose bristles stay beautifully splayed. It's so much easier to work this way and so much more efficient. Voila! Really simple texture in about three layers. Just a reminder that this is just a short snippet of the full two hour video painting fields and grasses and watercolor available on my website. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or would like to support me in creating more video content like this, please share, subscribe, or hit a super thanks. It means so very much to me and it's so very much appreciated. Visit my website or come follow me on social at Crystal Beshera Artist.